Bibles this morning, would like to ask you to please turn to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2. I'd like to read verses 6, 7, and 8. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 6, 7, and 8. Beginning in verse 6, the word of God says, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. Speaking about the mighty power of God, verses 6 and 7 give two or three different contrasts. Verse 6 says, The Lord killeth and maketh alive. You have opposites mentioned in verses 6 and 7. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. The main thought that's been on my heart for the last couple of weeks are two main, three main words. There are two times in these two verses that I just read that they're pretty similar. The last part of verse 6 says that God bringeth up. Last two words there, God bringeth up. And then the last phrase in verse 7 says, And God lifteth up. God bringeth up, and God lifteth up. You could do a good study on both the contrasts that are made there, but the main thing I want us to think about is God bringing us up and God lifting us up. There's not a person here that God has not brought up out of a lot of different situations. We've had many circumstances and conditions in our lives that God has brought us up out of some bad situations. And God has lifted us up many, many different ways. As we go through the Word of God, we can find numerous ways that God has lifted up us, and we can say from our experiences in life, that God has brought us up and God has lifted us up. One statement that's made in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8, you don't have to turn there, but the scripture says there, that God says to David, I took thee from following the sheep to be ruler over my people. You think about that. I took thee, what a great contrast that is. I took thee from following the sheep to be ruler over my people. Now people are a lot more valuable than sheep are and yet sheep have a value and he says I took thee from following the sheep to being ruler over my people. That was a great lifting up that God did in David's life. God blessed David many times in his life. God lifted him up many times. God brought him up out of a lot of trouble. And David writes quite a bit. He writes more about God lifting up and God bringing up than anyone, any other writer in the scriptures because of his own experience, God had repeatedly lifted him up. And I wonder if I were to ask you this morning, just write down all the different ways that God has brought you up and that God has lifted you up. Usually when I think about who brought me up, who do I think about just that expression, who brought me up? What do you think I usually think about? I think about my parents, my father, my mother. They brought me up. Uh, and the scripture speaks about that. And certainly God's the one that gave me the parents that I had. And ultimately it was God that brought me up and kept me up and kept you alive all of your life. God brought you up. God brought you out of your mother's womb. God's the one that formed you in your mother's womb. And God's the one that brought you out of your mother's womb. And God... God's Word says that God carries you to a hoary head. God's the one that takes care of you all of your life. God has brought you up and God has lifted you up numerous times in your lives. There have been times that you have been down in sin. 
that you, even after being born of the Spirit of God, there have been times that you have yielded to sin, and you have succumbed to the temptations of the devil, and you've gone down into the pit, you've gone down into sin, and then God has convicted your heart, you've begun, you've begun to see how low down you are, and you've begun to be lifted up by God. That's an amazing thing that God, when the sinner begins to repent and turn from their evil ways, it's amazing that God would lift them up and would have mercy upon them. He's had mercy on my life many, many times, and God has lifted me up and God has brought me up out of sin numerous times. And David mainly talks about that. But he also talks about times that he was at death's door. There were times that David was nearly killed, and yet God brought him up and God lifted him up. Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 40. Go to Psalm 40 just a moment. I want us to think about some of the words of David uh, as the Word of God speaks about how God lifted him up and God brought him up. The Bible talks about that, but David himself gives testimony that God had lifted him up and God has brought him up. While we're reading about some of the things that God lifted David up from and brought him up from, I want you to begin to enumerate and think in your own mind how many times has God lifted you up and brought you up. In Psalm 40, beginning with verse 1, I encourage you to go home and read all five verses. We'll probably only look at the first two verses to begin with this morning. Psalm 40, beginning with verse 1. David says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. I want you to know, brethren, that some of, some of the times that God has lifted me up and brought me up was not because I cried to the Lord. It was just God in his mercy and his grace has reached down and brought me up and lifted me up in spite of my unwillingness. God has the power to bring us up and turn us around when the Apostle Paul, Saul of Tarsus, was on the road to Damascus, he wasn't asking God to turn him around. He wasn't asking God to lift him up. God came to Saul of Tarsus and God turned his world upside down. And God began to manifest his uh, spirit and his power to uh, Saul of Tarsus. And Saul was lifted up in a mighty way, not because he cried to God, but because God in his infinite mercy and grace just reached down and lifted, it up, lifted him up. And as I look over this congregation, I know that me and you, many of us, there have been times that we were just like Saul of Tarsus. We were going away from God. We were doing things contrary to God and God's word. And yet God has come to us like he did Saul of Tarsus and has lifted us up and turned us around and caused us to repent. It's the goodness of God that leadeth thee to what? It's the good of God, goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. Every time that I have ever repented, it's because the Spirit of God and the goodness of God has lifted me up and turned me around. But there have been other times that I've been down in the valley. There have been times that I've been down in the pit and I've been crying unto God and I've been begging God to lift me up and God has lifted me up sometimes when I've been asking him to lift me up. And that's what David is talking about here in Psalm 40. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Verse 2 says, he, what are the next three words there? He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Listen, brethren, David cried to the Lord when he was down in that pit, when he was down in the clay, when he was stuck and he couldn't get out, he began to cry unto the Lord. That wasn't just a literal clay or miry pit, but it was a filth of sin in his life. And he began to cry to the Lord, and God did lift him up. You go on and read Psalm 51, and you'll read about how, how David was crying to the Lord, begging God to have mercy upon him and to forgive him of his sin. And God lifted him up, and God brought him up, and God restored unto David the joy of his salvation. Look in uh, Psalm 69, just a moment. Turn to Psalm 69. In Psalm 69, the first two or three verses... I want you to hear, even though the words are not there, God help me, God help me, even though those words are not there. And God, David is not saying, God lift me up. I think that you'll hear that is a statement that he's making. Psalm 69, listen, beginning in verse 1. 
He says, save me, O God. Is he talking about take me home to glory? Is that the kind of salvation he's talking about? No. Not at all. He's talking about he was in deep trouble and he needed God's help. So he says, save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. Brethren, this is not talking about literally drowning, but he's talking about his soul is overflowed with the troubles and problems of life. And sometimes that's the condition we're in and we're overflowed, our lives or our soul is overflowed with the waters of trouble. He says in verse 2, I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. Do you hear the condition he's in? He's down in the pit. He's crying to God. Was this the first time that he cried to God? Was this the first time he'd been in a pit? No, it wasn't. As you go through and read all the Psalms, you find over and over and over in David's life that, that he would be in the pit and he would cry unto the Lord and the Lord would lift him up. And then he would go through a season where things were well in his life and before you knew it, he was back down in another pit and again he knew what to do when he was cast down. He knew who could bring him up. He knew who could lift him up. He knew the only one that could help him was God. And so he would cry to the Lord and the Lord would lift him up again. Some of you this past week have had to go through some difficult things. You know who brought you up? You know who lifted you up? God did. There have been several in this congregation this morning that have had some difficult things during this past week, in the past two weeks, past three weeks. But you're not down in the valley right now. You're not down in that miry pit. The waters are not overflowing you anymore. And the reason the waters are not overflowing you is because you have done like David had done here. You have cried to the Lord and you beg God to help you out of that miry pit. And God has lifted you up. He brought us up and he's lifted us up. And we ought to be praising the Lord for what he's done for us. Look at Psalm 69 verses 13 and 14. Remember now the two words, the two expressions we're looking at is that God brings us up and God lifts us up. In Psalm 69, verses 13 and 14, David continues in the same psalm. He says, But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy. Hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Deliver me out of the mire, and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me, and out of the deep waters. I'll tell you, brethren, if you're going to be a Christian, if you're going to follow Christ, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, there will be people that will hate you. If people don't hate you, it's because you're not being a Christian. Let me repeat that. Well, let me just tell you what the scripture says. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're not being persecuted, Jesus talks repeatedly. Matthew 5, he begins the Sermon on the Mount. He says, Blessed are ye when men shall persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Brethren, the people of God that serve the Lord and obey God and do what God says, they're going to be a light to the world. And the world, men, love, darkness rather than light. And when you are hated, you're going to feel like you're going down and you're going to be overflowed with the opposition of the devil and his angels and all the enemies of God. But I'll tell you, the only one that can lift you up and bring you up out of that miry clay is God himself. And God does and God will. Amen. Going into 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, while you're turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm going to read you a few words out of the songbook. We're going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But one of the songs that we sometimes sing says, we're going to be reading now 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You'll be turning there. One of the songs says, In loving kindness Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim. You hear that? To reclaim. That's his soul had gone down. What did he need? He needed God to reclaim him. He needed God to bring him up. He needed God to... To lift him up. In loving kindness Jesus came. My soul in mercy to reclaim. Has Jesus ever come to you. And lifted you up. And brought you up. Out of the miry pit and the clay. And the waters. Indeed he has. 
The rest of that verse says, And from the depths of sin and shame, through grace he lifted me. Brethren, I, you, all of us, have been involved in sin from time to time in our lives. And the only reason that we've been brought out of that sin is because God has brought us up and lifted us up out of that sin. So he says, he called me long before I heard, before my sinful heart was stirred. But when I took him at his word, forgiven, he lifted me. He what? He lifted me. That's what the songwriter keeps saying over and over. He lifted me. He lifted me. Third verse says, His brow was pierced with many a thorn. His hands by cruel nails were torn. When from my guilt and grief forlorn, in love, He lifted me. When Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, He lifted me out of going to eternal hell, and He lifted me up and preserved me in Christ Jesus, and I will be and you will be in the eternal heaven forever because God lifted us up and forgave us of our sins. We need to praise the Lord that he did lift us up and he delivered us from the bondage of sin and death. He says now in the last verse of that song, he says, Now on a higher plane I dwell. Have you ever been up on that higher plane? Have you ever been lifted up like that? Well, I'll tell you who lifted you up is God and God alone, nobody can lift you up and nobody can bring you up out of that miry pit except God. That's the reason that David, every time he was in that miry pit, every time he was having trouble, he called upon the name of the Lord because he knew the power to lift him up was not in man, or not in the people, but in the power of God. Now listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The Word of God talks about people that cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. I would remind you that we're not talking about the eternal heaven when we die, but we're talking about the kingdom of heaven, which is defined in the scripture in Romans 14, 17 as righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And the only time that you can experience that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is if you're trying to live in a way that will honor and glorify God. And when you do try to follow the Lord, and you obey God and you keep his commandments, what does he do? Give me two words that God does when you're keeping the commandments of God. What does he do? He lifts you up. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 now, listen to verses 9 and 10. The scripture says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're not going to try to obey God, if you're not going to try to follow God, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to have that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. He says, be not deceived. Now listen carefully. He's going to list sin and the kind of sinners that sometimes we are in. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He lists ten different categories of sin, and he says those that are living in that kind of lifestyle, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But listen to verse 11. Verse 11 says, And such were... Some of you, he's talking to the church at Corinth, and he's telling the church at Corinth, there were some of you that fit into each of these ten categories. Some of you may have fit into several of the categories. He says, and such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. What did God do when they had been in that sin? What did God do? He lifted them up. He brought them up. He forgave them and gave them strength and power to turn away from that sin. And when they turned away from that sin, they then were able to enter into the, what? The kingdom of God. Isn't that amazing that God could take people in those categories and lift them up? You know, I, I know preachers, I have preacher friends, they like to talk about how bad they were. I don't want anybody here to know how bad I was. I don't want you to know about my sins. I'm not going to tell you how bad I was. But I'll tell you what. It's the amazing grace of God that God has spared my life. And it's the amazing grace of God that has lifted me up out of sinful ways. And I'm not completely away from sin, but I'm trying, and I ask you to pray for me, to live a life that would honor and glorify God. I think one of the worst things that can ever happen in any child of God's life 
is for them to live a life honoring and glorifying God for a long period of time, and then toward the end of their lives, they become a castaway. They become a reprobate. Children of God can not only be lifted up and brought up by God, but they can be cast down and cast away. Jesus said to the one talent servant who was a child of God, representing a child of God, Scripture says that he said, Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness with his weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm not here to talk about those that he cast down and cast away. I'm here to talk about those that are being lifted up and brought up by God. Now, turning your Bibles to Ephesians. What, what, what's he lifting us up from in 1 Corinthians chapter 6? What did he lift up those individuals in 1 Corinthians 6, 11? What did he lift them up from? Sinful ways. Everybody hear that? Is there any sinful way that might be in your life that God can't lift you up from? No. What do you need to do if you want to turn away from sin? You, you have to call on the Lord. You have to look unto Jesus, the author and finish of your faith. Now go to Ephesians chapter 2. There's another lifting up here in Ephesians chapter 2. Besides God lifting us up above our enemies and besides God lifting us up out of sin, I want you to think about in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, there's a great lifting up that took place while you were dead in trespasses and sin. You know, the modern day theology says that God has his hand reached out and he wants you to be born again. If you'll just, if you'll just accept him, if you'll just take his hand, you can be born again. I'll tell you, that's not taught anywhere in the word of God. Amen. My condition was not that I was sick and Jesus reached his hand out to me. The Bible says I was dead in trespasses and sins. He didn't reach his hand out to me and then I took his hand and got born again. Rather than I was dead in trespasses and sins, just as surely as Lazarus was dead when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. You know, the, if, the only reason everybody in the graves didn't come forth is because he said, Lazarus, come forth. If he had hollered, come forth, everybody probably would have come out of the grave. But he said, Lazarus, come forth. And there was a time in my life and in your life, there's been a time that we were dead in trespasses and sins, and God has called us from death unto life. And that's a great lifting up that only God can do. God alone is the giver of life and the sustainer of life. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 beginning with verse 1. Talking about a great lifting up now. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And then he talks about in verse 2 how you were in time past. Verse 3 continues to talk about it. Listen to verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. What's the next two words there? But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, for with he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And hath, next three words there. Grace has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. Have you ever been quickened? Have you been born of the Spirit of God? And then after you've been born of the Spirit of God, has God ever lifted you up and raised you up and blessed you to sit together in heavenly places? He has raised, I want you to notice that. He says, he raised us up. The Apostle Paul is rejoicing with the saints at Ephesus. He says he raised me up. He raised you up. He raised us up and blessed us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. Brother, one of the greatest blessings I have in my life is to come together with the people of God and for God to lift us up and raise us up and us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. Coming to the house of God, being in the house of God and being lifted up by the Holy Spirit Higher ground, isn't it pretty? Higher ground. The greatest joy I have in my life was not, is when I'm blessed to be raised up and sit together with other saints of God. Sit together with other saints of God in the house of God. Singing the songs of Zion. Lifting up our voices. Making a joyful noise of the, of, to the Lord. Singing words of truth hearing the prayers of the brothers and sisters in Christ and studying God's holy word. 
It's the greatest blessing we have in this world, brethren, is the spiritual joys that God lifts us up and blesses us to sit. Now, one day he's going to lift us up all the way to the eternal heaven, and we're going to sit up there. But right now on this earth, what a great blessing it is that we can sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. God will only bless a church to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord when those people that make up that church body, when they're individually trying to serve the Lord, then when the whole body is trying to serve the Lord, God lifts up the church and blesses them to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm not going to read all the other scriptures that are on my, on my heart. I do want to mention just a couple. Just listen. You don't have to turn there. But in uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, the Word of God talks about how uh, Hezekiah. You remember Hezekiah? What's the number one thing you remember about Hezekiah? Anybody? What's the number one thing you remember about Hezekiah? What, I, what did Isaiah go to him and tell him was going to happen? You're going to die. You're fixing to die. And God told Isaiah to tell Hezekiah, you're going to die. And he told him to set your house in order because you're going to die. And brethren, that's a frightening statement to hear. You're going to die. That's <laughs> true of every one of us. We're going to die. But he was fixing to die pretty quick. Everybody follow that? 22, 24 years ago, the doctors told me I had less than a year to live without a heart transplant. He told me, go home and get your will done and go home and go to bed and hope and pray. He didn't say pray. He said, hope you get a heart because he didn't believe in God. And he said, nothing can save your life. You're going to go weaker and weaker. I'll tell you, brethren, he talked to me just like Isaiah talked to Hezekiah. And Isaiah told Hezekiah, you're going to die. Set your house in order. But I'll tell you what happened. Hezekiah began to cry to the Lord. And God heard his cry, and God lifted him up, and God added 15 years to his life. And I well remember when I was told I had less than a year to live, I begged God, I said, Lord, do for me what you did for Hezekiah. Give me 15 more years. And at 14 years, I began to pray, Lord, give me 15 more years. <laughs> what a blessing it is, brethren. Did you know God has lifted every one of us? There have been many in this congregation that have been at death's door. You've been at death's door. And yet God has lifted you up. And what a great, powerful God it is. God is the giver of life and the sustainer of life. And the only reason you're alive today, I'm going to tell everybody here, the only reason you're alive today is because God's kept you alive. Amen. There's not a one of you or your family that would have lived through last night had God not kept you alive during the night. And, and you might say, well, uh, we're, not, we're not sick. You don't have to be sick. We went to sleep one night, and my child was dead the next morning. Uh, many times people go to sleep, and the next morning a member of their family has gone home to be with the Lord. You don't know what's going to happen in your life. And I want to tell everybody here, you need to thank God that he's lifted you up out of death many, many different times and in many different ways. <clears throat> Go with me to Psalm 30 in, in closing. Turn with me to Psalm 30. Psalm 30, I want to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 30, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Word of God says, I will extol thee. That means I will praise thee. I will thank you, O Lord. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast, what? lifted me up for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me O Lord my God I cried unto thee didn't we read several different times where David cried to the Lord so the scripture says in verse 2 O Lord my God I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me O Lord thou hast brought up my soul what's the first expression that he used in verse 1 thou hast lifted me up the third, second expression in verse 3, For thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Brethren, we have all many, many different reasons to be praising God and giving glory to God. But one of the greatest reason, reasons is that God has delivered us from the bondage of sin and death. 
God has delivered us from sin many times in our lives. God has blessed us to turn away from sin. God has lifted us up. And God has forever paid the price for all the sins we ever committed in our lives. And it's only because of the blood of Jesus Christ that one day we're going to be in heaven, the eternal heaven forever. We're going to be there because God's going to, give me three words. He's going to lift us up. May God help us to praise him for my, is my prayer for Christ's sake. When we walk with